Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This is my fifth tutorial in TensorFlow, and this is about ensemble learning, which means that we are using a collection of neural networks instead of just a single neural network. I will assume that you have already seen the previous tutorials, so I will just explain the parts that are new. So we want to make five different neural networks, and we will use the same structure as in the previous tutorial. So we have the input image, which goes into a convolutional layer, and that goes into another convolutional layer, and to a fully connected layer, and then to the classification layer. So we want five different networks that are structured like this. This is called an ensemble of neural networks. So let's see how we make that in TensorFlow and what the results are on the classification accuracy. Once again, we are using the MNIST dataset and it is split into 55,000 images in the training set and 10,000 in the test set and 5,000 in the validation set. What we will do here is to combine the validation set and the training set into one set of 60,000 images. And we do that in these two lines here. And for each neural network, we will use a random training set with this size here, and you can change this variable in the exercises if you like. We won't be using a validation set here, but if we did, then this would be the size. So here we have a function for generating a random training set out of those 60,000 images. And here we have the usual data dimensions that we have had in the previous tutorials. And the image size is 28 by 28 pixels and so on. And we also have some of the usual helper functions from before, and here we have the plot images. This has just been modified slightly so that we also print the predicted class of the ensemble and the predicted class of the best performing network. And we can plot a few images from the test set just to see that everything looks correct. So now we have to build the TensorFlow graph and this is done like in the previous tutorials. So we start by making a placeholder variable called X, which is for inputting the images. And we have to reshape it so it's a four dimensional tensor. And we also have to input the true class label for each of the images. Then we use pretty tensor to make the neural network. And first we have to wrap the input images in a pretty tensor object. And then we can use that object to construct the whole convolutional neural network. So first we have the convolutional layer, then we have max pooling, another convolutional layer, max pooling again. Then we flatten the output of that. And then we input it to the first fully connected layer. And then we have the softmax classifier at the end. This gives us a predicted class label for each of the images. And it also gives us a loss function that we can optimize. So in this case, we use the atom optimizer on the loss function. And then we have a saver object, which I demonstrated in the previous tutorial. And we will use that for saving the variables for the different neural networks so that we can reload them later and use them as an ensemble. And they will be saved to the checkpoints path. And you need to make sure that this exists. Otherwise, the program will crash and the weights and biases and other variables for each of the neural networks will be stored in a file called network and the number of the network. So this is zero, one, two, three, and so on. So now we have to create the TensorFlow session as usual so that we can actually execute the graph that we have just defined. And here we have a new helper function for creating a random batch of training examples. And it looks like this. And here we have the typical optimization helper function. The only difference is that now we're taking the training set as arguments to the function and we don't use early stopping like we did in the previous tutorial. And now we get to the point where we're going to create our ensemble of neural networks and we define that we want five neural networks and each of them has to be optimized with 10,000 iterations. And here we have the loop that creates and saves the variables for each of those neural networks. And you will note that I have made an if true because the first time you won't run this notebook, you want this to run. But after that, you might only want to analyze the results and you don't want to, to wait for it to create the neural networks again. So you might want to set this to false. So what goes on here is that we first create a random training set and we're not going to use the validation set, which is this underscore here and here, because this function also returns the validation set. And then we're going to initialize all the variables for the network. So, so let us go back up. And this is where we define the convolutional neural network. And we will use the same TensorFlow graph for this. What we are doing is just we are reinitializing all the variables of these layers in the network. And then we're going to train them again. So let's go back down. So first we initialize them with random values here. Then we're going to optimize them with 10,000 iterations using the training set that we just created. And after that is done, we're going to save all the variables of the TensorFlow graph to a file. 
And you can see that I have already run the notebook. So I have all the checkpoint files for the different neural networks here. This file here holds all the variables for the TensorFlow graph for the first neural network. This one holds all the variables for the second and so on. On my computer, this takes about one hour to run for five neural networks. But if you have a GPU, it should be much faster. So here we have a helper function for predicting the, the labels of images. And I won't go into this in detail, but what it basically does is it goes through the list of images that we are providing, and then it runs the TensorFlow graph to get the predicted labels out. And the source is well documented, so you can read it if you like. So here we have a helper function for making the class predictions for each of the neural networks in the ensemble. So we start by making some empty lists with the results. Here we have the predicted labels and the classification accuracies on the test set for each of those networks and the classification accuracies on the validation set. And then we loop over this for each of the neural networks. So first we reload the variables that we just saved. So in this line here, we would reload the files from out here. And then we call a helper function for calculating the classification accuracy on the test set. And then we append the results on the list we had above this list here. And then we do the same for the validation set and append it to the list. And then we print a status message. And then we use the other helper function above to calculate the predicted labels of the images in the test set. And then we append the results to the other list that we defined above. Finally, when we have done this for all the five neural networks, we return the results. And this is what it looks like when we execute that function. So we see for each line the classification accuracy on the validation set and the test set for each of the neural networks. So for the first one, the accuracy is 99.16% on the validation set. And the second network has 99.5% accuracy and so on. And one thing you can notice here is that the network that has the highest accuracy on the validation set is this one, 9966. And the classification accuracy is 9894 on the test set. But this network here only has an accuracy of 9950 on the validation set, but the accuracy is slightly higher on the test set. So there is a kind of a random relationship that the network that has the highest accuracy on the validation set is not necessarily the one that has the highest accuracy on the test set. There is a slight random factor here. On average, the neural networks has a classification accuracy of 98.87% on the test set. There are different ways to calculate the predicted labels of the ensemble. One way is to calculate the predicted class number for each of the neural networks and then select the class number with most votes. But this requires a large number of neural networks relative to the number of classes. Here we have 10 different classes, but we only have five different neural networks. So in case they all predicted different class numbers, the vote would be inconclusive. So a better solution in this case is that we just use the average. So we take the average of the predicted labels for all of the neural networks in the ensemble. And the predicted class number of the ensemble is just the index of the highest value in each of those labels. So we can also calculate a Boolean array, whether each of the images in the test set was correctly classified by simply comparing the predicted class of the ensemble to the actual class of the test set. And we can just negate that array so we get a Boolean array, whether each of the images in the test set is incorrectly classified. This comes in handy below. So now let's find the best neural network out of the five that we made. And first we list the classification accuracies on the test set again. And we find that the highest one was this one. We have already calculated the predicted labels for this neural network in the above. So we just need to pull them out here. And then we calculate the predicted class number. And then we make a Boolean array whether that predicted class number was correct. And another Boolean array whether it was incorrect. So now let's compare the ensemble to the best single network. So the ensemble correctly classified 9,917 images out of the 10,000 images in the test set. The best single network only had 9,896 images correct. So what we make here is a Boolean array whether each of the images in the test set was correctly classified by the ensemble and incorrectly classified by the best neural network. So we just use the Boolean arrays that we constructed above and then take the logical end of those. And if we calculate the sum of this Boolean array, we get the number of images in the test set that were correctly classified by the ensemble 
and incorrectly by the best network. And this number is 40. And what you will note is that the difference between the number of correctly classified images of the ensemble and the best network is not 40, it is lower and we will see why below. We can also make another Boolean array whether the best single network performed better than the ensemble. And we simply use the Boolean arrays that we defined above. And again, we sum the result and we find that 19 images in the test set were correctly classified by the best network, but incorrectly classified by the ensemble. So what this means is that the ensemble is not always better than the individual networks. There are some images that are classified correctly by some of the individual networks that are then classified incorrectly by the ensemble. And this suggests that the effect of using an ensemble is slightly random. So let's plot a few images from the test set where the ensemble classified it correctly, but the best network classified it incorrectly. So first we have the image six, and this is clearly a six, and the ensemble classified it correctly as a six, but the best neural network classified it as a zero. The second image is an eight, and the ensemble got it right, and the best network thought it was a zero again. And the third image, also an eight, and the ensemble got it right, and the best network thought it was a three. So let us look at the predicted class labels for the ensemble for the first image. So this image here, and we have them right here. The way we calculate the predicted class number is that we take the index of the highest element in this vector. So it would be the index here. We start at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the predicted class number is a six, as we see up here. But what we see is that the ensemble was confused. It thought it might be a zero or it might be a six. But the number was higher for the six, so the ensemble thinks that this is probably more a six than a zero, and that is why we select the six here. We can also look at the predicted class labels for the best single network, and here it is almost exactly the opposite. So the best network was also confused whether this was a zero or a six, but it had a higher number for the zero than the six, and so that is how it classified it. We can also look at the predicted labels for all the neural networks in our ensemble. And what we see is that they are all confused about whether this number was a zero or a six. The first network didn't really think it was a zero and really was quite confident that this was a six. And it was the same for this network here. But the last network here was not quite as sure. And these two networks here had the opposite relationship. So these two networks were not sure either but they thought it was probably a zero instead of a six. So what happens when we create the ensemble is that we take the average of all the numbers in each of these columns, and the average of these numbers here is 0.37, and the average of these numbers here is 0.63, so that is why the ensemble label looks like this, and why the predicted class of the ensemble was a six, because this number was highest. So now let's look at some example images where the best single network was better than the ensemble. So the first image here, the true class was a two, and the ensemble predicted that it was a seven, while the best single network predicted that it was indeed a two. And the second image is a four, while the ensemble predicted that it was a six. I don't know how it got that wrong, but it did. And the best single network predicted that it was a four. This image here is supposed to be a two, but the ensemble predicted that it was a zero, and I can see why that might be, because it looks kind of like a zero, but this best single network actually predicted that it was a two. This image here is a nine, but the ensemble predicted that it was a seven, while the best single network predicted that it was indeed a nine. So the ensemble doesn't always work better than individual neural networks. So let's again look at the predicted labels of the ensemble. And this is for the first image up here. And we see that it is almost equally confused whether this is a two or a seven. And we can also look at the predicted labels for the best single network. And it is also confused about whether this image was a two or a seven, but it thought, no, this is probably a two because this number here was quite a bit higher than this number over here. And we can also look at the predicted labels for each of the neural networks in the ensemble. And what we see is that in general, they are confused about whether it was a two or a seven. And the first network also thought that maybe it was an eight. Let's go back and look at the image. I don't know, this doesn't look like an eight at all to me. So that was quite bad. 
And once again, the way that we calculated the predicted labels for the ensemble is that we simply take the average of the numbers down here. So the average of this column here is 0.46. And the average of this col column here is 0.03. So this is whether the image really shows a 2 or a 3. And the average of this column over here is 0.47. And this is whether the image is a 7. And the average of this column here is 0.04, and this is whether the image shows an 8. So the conclusion is that the ensemble gave us a slightly higher accuracy on the test set. It had 99.2% versus 99.0% for the best individual neural network. But sometimes the ensemble misclassified images that the best single network correctly classified. So it looks like the ensemble has a sort of small random effect on the classification accuracy on the test set, but it's not always better. And you should consider whether your research time is best spent on making ensembles or making better neural network designs. Another thing to keep in mind is that it takes a lot more time to train an ensemble instead of just a single neural network. We should also make a small technical comment. The way we implemented the ensemble in this code here was to use the saver object of TensorFlow, but this was really made for a different purpose. And if you want to make different types of neural networks in an ensemble, then it gets a lot more complicated to do this in TensorFlow. You can use an add-on package, which is called SKFlow. But at this time in August, 2016, I would say it is still in the alpha stage or development stage. So you may want to wait at least a few months before you start using that. I have made a few suggestions for exercises and I think that you should go over these and try to solve them so you can get better at using TensorFlow. You can click on the link below this video to download this notebook.